Well, we are joined uh, at Santa Pod Raceway by a proper American uh, royalty in our wonderful sport. Melanie Troxell is with us here today at Santa Pod Raceway. Now, Melanie, you've been to Europe before, a couple of times on holiday, obviously, but last year you came over to Hockenheim to check everything out. Um, what did you take from that visit? And obviously it must have been pretty good because you're back here to race this weekend. Didn't, or at least I didn't know what to expect coming over there. I mean, I've, I've always known that, um, that that drag racing was somewhat popular over here. Um, but when you get to see, you know, the actual cars, everybody racing, we were really impressed with uh, just the variety of race cars out there. You know, a lot of different classes, a lot of different cars. And, uh, you know, so we, we had a great time out there. Love to see the, the competition, the level of cars. And, and uh, Roger Burgess, who owns R2 Beach Racing, the team I drive for, it's, it's been important for him to, uh, to see the ProMod class grow. And, uh, you know, that's um, something he would like to see as, as a, a kind of worldwide competition between, between the, the, uh, the different ProMod racers. And uh, so this is kind of our effort to continue that on, not, not only to be out here and, and support Michael Goldquist, who's come over to the, to the States and raced with our team, but uh, to kind of help promote some, uh, some worldwide ProMod racing. Well, that's really cool and really nice of you to do it as well because we, obviously, a lot of races go from Europe to the US, but I think we, this is the first time we can remember somebody from the US has actually come to Europe because they want to race and they want to compete. Um, what are your actual plans for this weekend? Do you think you can hit the ground running when, the, uh, when you get out there for qualifying or are you just going to have a couple of set-up runs and then try and nail it tomorrow? What do you think? You know, it's, it's going to be kind of tough. What complicates matters for us here is, one, we don't have a car yet. You know, we're not expecting our race car to show up until 4 o'clock this afternoon. So in some sense, this, this rain out here might be playing to our advantage. You it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's part of our grand plan. No, we'd much rather have the race car and be racing right now. But... Uh, but yeah, we really would like to get a run still in today. So if this delays the program to the point that our car will make it and we get to make one of the sessions, that will help us out. I'd, I'd hate to go into tomorrow with, uh, you know, no sessions at all and, and just try and qualify on, on tomorrow. But um, but yeah, I mean, we don't quite know what to expect yet. I mean, obviously we, we walked around, looked at the racetrack yesterday. Um, the, the tough part for us is going to be adjusting to the track conditions over here. Almost. Well, all of the tracks that um, the NHRA Pro Mod cars run on over in the state uh, at least have a launch pad that is concrete. So for us, that's going to be the tricky part. I mean, we go from at least 60 foot of concrete to an entire racetrack all made of concrete. So an asphalt starting line here is going to be a little different for us. So if we can get the car launched off the starting line, um, you know, we feel pretty good that we'll be able to get down the track. But we're not taking anything for granted. You know, we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to learn about uh, your track conditions over here and. And uh, if we can get the, quali the car qualified, I'd say that's that's the first uh, you know first agenda. That's cool. Well, you actually driven the car that's coming over this weekend because it's uh, I know because Roger Burgess has a number of cars. You normally drive the Corvettes, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I drive the uh, the In-N-Out Burger Corvette, um, but I do get to drive pretty much all of the different promo cars that sometimes we're testing. Sounds like it's such a tough it's job. so terrible. After, after the race weekend, if that's not bad enough, after the race weekend of getting to drive a race car, um, I stay after and I will usually test all three of our promo cars on, okay. on a one or two uh, test days after after each event. So I get some seat time in, in all the cars. This car is a, um, a car that we have not raced with the exception of Michael coming over to Gainesville to race this car. Um, hasn't raced since last year or so. Was it Roger's car? It was Roger's car before, it was wasn't it? Yeah. last year, yeah. So uh, I know I've made some test runs and I don't know that I've been to the finish line in it, but um, generally for us, if we can get through the 1 2 shift, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's tends to be smooth sailing. Sure enough, if I say that, it's going to come back to bite me. But uh, definitely the early part of the racetrack is, is the trickier part for us. So I've made quite a few launches in that car, so it shouldn't be completely foreign to me. But, uh, you know, it, it has been a while, so I'm kind of interested in the car getting here just so I can get climb back mm. in it and make sure everything touches. Well, other than... It Great to be, have, to be having you here, sorry. You've, obviously it's you, but there's also your team with you. Tell us about the guys you've got in with you this weekend to make it all happen. Well, you know, a lot of, uh, as you mentioned, we've got um, several race cars and three complete uh, teams, you know, with crew members over there. And a lot of what decided on who was getting to come is who had a current passport. So oh, okay. a little bit of a, a mixed <laughs> group of, um, of people over there. Um, Al Bellis, who is the, the, one of the crew chiefs on our ProMod teams, is over and uh, over here to... to to tune the car, but we've also brought on a, a mixture of um, crew members from our, our team, some of them um, from up in Canada, um, you know, one of the guys, Johnny, from, from my team. We've got, uh, 
you know, like I said, a, a mixture of different crew people from the three different teams, but uh, certainly all well qualified to work on the car. And uh, the car was pretty much ready to go when it left the U.S., but uh, got a little bit of work to do once it gets here. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, like I said, we're planning on, uh, you know, if it makes it here by the 4 o'clock schedule time, which is what we've been told, that uh, you know, we've got an hour or two of work just to get it ready to go after it gets here because, of course, you have to drain all the fluids out of it and everything mm. it, when it gets shipped over. But uh, it shouldn't take us long to get the car back together. Well, that's good. I mean, uh, also, uh, I don't know whether everybody out there knows this, I just need to mention it. You've driven uh, a great variety of race cars, top fuel cars, funny cars, top alcohol dragsters as well. Um, what, I, again, maybe people don't know is that you do drive the Pro Mod and the funny car, at the, well, not the same time, but at the same event sometimes. How difficult is that? Well, that's definitely been a first for me this year to drive two different classes at the same event. Uh, and, you know, our original plan had been to run the, uh, the Pro Mod car for the 10 race series over on the NHRA circuit. And then the opportunity came to put the funny car back on the track, which is what I drove for R2B2 racing in 2008. And, um, you know, it was to put that back out for eight races. And at the time, there was only like one or maybe two overlapping events. And since then, we've added more events for the funny car to go out and race. And, and it's given a more overlapping events, but it's, it's actually a lot of fun, but I, I did have my concerns at the beginning of the years of, about driving two different cars, and, and certainly not even two cars that are similar in, in driving style and starting line procedure, and it's kind of funny that the things that I was more worried about, uh, the actual um, starting line procedure, like if you uh, if you can imagine that the Chromat car is a lot more like your, your street car in that it has a clutch pedal. Um, so if you were going to pull up to a, a stoplight and leave off of that, bring the RPMs up a little bit, and then when the light changes, step off the clutch and mash the throttle down. It's, it's very similar to that. The funny car is quite a bit different in that you actually step off the clutch pedal before you stage the car. It doesn't kill the engine. It's a centrifugal clutch. And then you leave off of the throttle pedal. So those were kind of my concerns, that I didn't want to go up there and do the wrong, you know, launch procedure basically in, in the two different cars. But um, what's, what's turned out to be a little more tricky about it is the – you know, running back and forth between the two different uh, pit areas. What what pit area do I have to be in to start this car up and be in the staging lanes at the right time? It makes it a little bit hectic. But, you know, considering you go back a year ago and uh, I was on the sidelines not driving. Yeah, that's well, a nice problem to have. This yeah. is a great yeah. problem to have. I'm, I'm not complaining at all. Well, I mean... Uh, there's hardly anybody that's done it, I think, in the world. So it's a real feat to be able to do that. And plus, you've also won in different classes or more different classes as well uh, with the NHRA. Does anything you've done in your career really stand out? Hopefully this weekend will, but, yeah. but other, other than that, well, this is, is this the first time you've actually raced outside the U.S.? This is the first time I've raced off, off of uh, North America. I have okay. raced up in Canada, but certainly first time over here. So uh, this would be a not only a big one for me in, in a, a first Cromont win, but um, certainly to, to win, uh, you know, over on, uh, you know, outside of the U.S. Um, well, you'd be team. number one in FIA points as well. So that would be, <laughs> be quite that'd good. That would be, cool. be real nice. But yeah, for me, I guess, I mean, you, you always remember your first wins in, in different classes, but for me, uh, one of the things I guess I'm most proud of is that there are only, um, I believe, 13 drivers in the, 14 drivers in the in the NHRA who have won in both uh, Top Fuel, Dragster, and the Funny Car class. And, and uh, you know, I'm one of best like you. And if you go, sounds kind of like a lot of people still, but you No, it's not. No, no, it's a long way. The entire history of the NHRA, and it, that really contains some of the biggest names in the sport. So yeah. for me to be a part of that list is, is pretty special. So with driving the different types of race cars, do you actually have a favorite, or is it all about the competition? You know what? For, I, I won't turn down pretty much anything that people ever <laughs> let me drive. I'll drive just about anything that's out there. But uh, certainly um, the pro mod cars are a lot of fun. They're a handful. I think that's why the fans love to watch them. They're, they're crossed up sideways all over the place. And, uh, you know, that that's what makes them fun to drive, too. Um, but I consider myself to be an adrenaline junkie. I loved uh you know, roller coasters growing up, and skydiving, love anything like that. And so you got to go back to the nitro cars, 300 miles an hour and, and four or five Gs. I mean, that's really, um, that takes me back to the original thing that attracted me to all of this, which is the adrenaline rush, and I definitely get that out of the, the three mile, 300 mile an hour cars. Not to take anything away from the ProMod cars, because they're, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a different feeling. It's, I describe it less about the adrenaline rush and more about just being a lot of fun to drive. Yeah.